we will configure a pulse generator in Network 1 of our block. We start by providing the condition to trigger the pulse start. In this case, a normally open contact. Now we drag and drop a pulse generator, or TP timer, onto the network from the basic instructions catalog. Because the pulse generator is actually a standard function block, it will require an instance data block to operate. A call options pop-up allows you to name the data block and give it a number manually, or you can accept the system generated name and number. We will accept the system generated name and number in this example by simply clicking the OK button to continue. At the PT input, we enter the time for the pulse duration in milliseconds, 5000 for the example. The ET output of the block displays the elapsed time as the timer runs. We will give this output a memory location so that it can be monitored later in the video. The output of the timer is the Q element. We will program a coil element to be controlled by the timer. At this point, the pulse timer has been configured and programmed. We will download the block to the PLC and click the eyeglass icon in the block menu bar to monitor the block and pulse generator. Upon actuation, Q goes high and the timer starts timing out as shown at output ET. The ET output displays the elapsed time since the timer was actuated. When the elapsed time equals the set point, Q goes low and the timer waits for the next rising edge from the trigger on the N input. With the next rising edge on N, the process starts over. Note that the input at N does not have to be maintained for the pulse generator to continue the high output at Q. The timer continues until the elapsed time equals the set point. We have just successfully programmed a pulse generator in the project.